Our responsive reading for this Mother's Day is Psalm 98. Your response is, shout with joy to the Lord. Sing a new song to the Lord, who has done marvelous things, whose right hand and holy arm have won the victory. Together, shout with joy to the Lord. O Lord, you have made known your victory. You revealed your righteousness in the sight of the nations. Shout with joy to the Lord. You remember your steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice, and sing. Shout with joy to the Lord. And let us pray. O great God of love, you revealed your love to us through Jesus and through the love of the people who are important to us in our family. We thank you for all mothers this morning, and Lord, we pray that your love would continue to shine in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our first Bible reading comes from 1 John chapter 4. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not re reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters, are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen, cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. And our gospel reading. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as you have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commands, so that you may love one another. Here is the Bible readings. And kids, it's time for the children's message. So, this morning we just read that God is love. And I want to ask how did you learn about love? How did you learn about love in this world? 
A lot of us learn about love from our parents. And today is Mother's Day, so we celebrate mothers. And you should know that your mother loves you. And you've probably learned a lot about love from her, but not just only her love, but also God's love. And you've probably learned it from other loving people in your life too. So other relatives that you have, other parents, other grandparents, um, all those are important people in your lives, and they are all people who help you know about the love of God. So this morning I want you to give your mom a big hug and say to her, I love you and thank you for loving me. Give your mom a big hug. All right, thanks kids. Once there was a Sunday school program and the mother of a five-year-old sat right in the front pew to help her child. He was afraid that he was going to forget his line. And sure enough, when it came time, the little boy froze, forgetting everything he practiced. His mother leaned forward and quietly fed him his line. I am the light of the world. Suddenly, the little boy's face beamed and he shouted out, My mother is the light of the world! Today, I want to talk about being born of love. And if you're lucky enough to have, a have had a loving mother, then you probably know that you are fortunate enough to either be born of love or adopted in love. This morning, I want to take that concept one step further. I want, to, I want to talk about being born from the God of love. Because every one of us, no matter who we are, is fortunate enough to have been born out of the love of God. Twice in today's Bible reading from 1 John chapter 4 comes this simple and yet immensely powerful phrase, God is love. That is the self-definition of God. God is love. Think about that for a moment. Out of all the possible ways to define God, of all the ways to tell us what God is and what God is not, God has chosen to be defined first and foremost by this stunning phrase, God is love. Not defined as protector, not as provider, not as the giver of prosperity, not as the bringer of justice, not even as all-powerful, but rather defined as love. God is love. There were various words for love in Greek, the language of the Roman Empire, but early Christians took the word agape, the word for love that was used only rarely at the time, and they used that word to describe the God that they had experienced through Jesus Christ. Because the word agape in Greek embodies self-sacrificing love. Agape is the self-sacrificing love that is at the heart of the truth about our God. Our God created us and loves us dearly. And our God sacrificed himself for us by giving us Jesus, God being crucified and risen on our behalf. If you do not learn anything else about God as you study the example of Jesus, you, you must learn that one thing, that our God is love. This then is how we know our God. We don't have to guess what God is like, we can simply look to see the self-sacrificial, dedicated way that God has acted on our behalf. And our God has acted in love, sending us Jesus Christ. And this very act, then, defines everything about how we humans should conduct our lives. Our Bible text from 1 John declares, Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. Again, dwell in that phrase for a moment. 
Everyone who loves is born of God, for God is love. We all know that we were born from a biological mother, but how are we born of God? How are we born of God? There's a famous encounter in the Bible between Jesus and a Jewish religious leader named Nicodemus. In the encounter, Jesus tells Nicodemus that he must be born from above. And Nicodemus is confused, saying, how can anyone be born after growing old? Can you enter a second time into your mother's womb? Being born of God is not to be born twice, but rather it is to recognize that the first time we were born, we were born not just from a mother, but you were also born out of the love of God, our gracious, self-giving, self-sacrificing, all-compassionate God. We are each of us born of God. We are each of us born of love. In fact, the Hebrew word for compassion comes from the root word of womb. As each of us experiences the compassion of God in all aspects of our life, then we are experiencing the womb of God. God is love, and we are born of God's love. Love gives birth. That's what love is designed to do. Love gives birth, so to speak, through acts of love becoming a reality in this world. And so it is that the whole point of being loved by God is to birth that love toward other people. In 1 John 4, it maintains that the fullest and most authentic way that any of us can really know what our God is truly like is when we have the love of God flowing out from us. When we birth love into this world, then we more fully know the love that comes from God. For love is not just an abstract concept. It's not just words you say. It's an action. Love is lived concretely. We can't really know God and God's love until we start living it out toward other people. First John puts it this way, Beloved, since God has loved us so much, we ought to love one another. Or in other words, since we are born of love, the only way that we can fully know and experience what love is, is when we start exhibiting it ourselves. Over and over again in the Bible, love for God is linked with love for neighbor. First John says, Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters, are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen, cannot love God whom they cannot see. This, I think, is precisely what Jesus said in this morning's Gospel lesson. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. We can't really fully know and appreciate the immense love that our God has for us until we begin to start loving others, especially those who don't always act so deserving of love. In the same way, we may not fully know and appreciate the love that our parents have had for us until we became parents ourselves and poured out ourselves for our own children. And I think a lot of people who have that experience that have children say, well, I finally get what it was like for my parents to show love to me. Our God is love. The God of self-giving, self-sacrificing, agape love. And we can best understand that when we act in a self-giving, self-sacrificing, agape way toward other people. For parents, we hope that the love that we pour into our children flows out of them then into the world, just as our loving God hopes the same thing for us. We hope that their love starts to resemble our love, 
and we hope that they will reflect the love of our God, who so dearly cherishes each one of us. And we hope that they will respectfully cherish others. Sociologists have a theory called the looking glass theory. And this is basically the theory that you become what the most important person in your life thinks you are. That could be a mother or a father or grandparent or partner or spouse or friend. Whatever image the most important person in your life has of you, the theory is that is what you will become. In a sense, the person we are and the love that we show is a reflection of our most important relationship. This morning, I want you not only to think of your relationship with your mother, I want you to think even more so of your relationship with God, the other person that you were born of. How are you then a reflection of God to this world? Do you care for and cherish others in the same way that your God has cared for and cherished you? Do you love as God has first loved you? Are you giving birth to compassion and mercy in this world? Are you a reflection of the love of God, who is your most important relationship? As you think about that, first and foremost, I want you to never forget one thing, and that is that God deeply loves you. You were born of God. You were born of love. There's a story of an Irish priest who, when walking, well, who's on a walking tour of a rural parish, saw an old peasant kneeling by the side of the road and praying. Impressed, the priest said to the man, you must be very close to God. The peasant looked up from his prayers, thought for a moment, and then smiled saying, yes, he's very fond of me. God is very fond of you. The Gospel writer John referred to himself as the one whom Jesus loved. Not in an arrogant sense, as in Jesus liked him best, but rather as a matter of self-identity. He saw himself as one who was beloved of God. We all have family relationships that define us. And this morning I want you also to think about how your relationship with God defines you. Think of yourself as the one whom Jesus loves. Think of yourself as did that peasant praying beside the road, as the one whom God is very fond of. Think of yourself as being born out of the love of God. And when you do, remember that love gives birth. It's lived out. The whole point of all the love that God has lavished upon you, the whole point of the love that was poured into you by your parents, if you were lucky enough to have loving parents, the whole point of all the goodness and mercy and compassion that you have received to date in your life is this. Love one another. Amen. And our hymn is Love Divine, All Loves Excelling.
Let us together profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, so I'm printed in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And let us join our hearts together in a time of prayer. Let us pray. O God of love, you are love, and we praise you for the love that you have poured into us. We especially thank you, on, thank you on this day for all loving mothers and for the grace that has flowed out of them to us. We ask for your blessing on this Mother's Day to be upon all women, all mothers, all families, and all relationships. May your, may your love embrace us all and bind us all together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we know that you love the world and seek to care for everyone in it. Please be with all the needy, the poor, the unemployed, the hungry, and the malnourished. Be with those who are struggling with violence and warfare. Be with all refugees. Shower your love upon those who are oppressed, those who are discriminated against, and those who are marginalized in our society. May your love bring dignity, justice, freedom, and nurture for all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, we thank you that we thank you today for the blessings that you have bestowed upon our lives. Help us also to show our appreciation to those who have been a blessing to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you are love. You care for the grieving. And we pray on this day for all who mourn the loss of a loved one, especially those who have lost a mother. We lift up in our prayers this morning the family of Eileen Culp, who passed away this week. And we also pray for all who are sick, hospitalized, ailing, or recovering. Be with all in our community and in our world who are dealing with the devastation of the COVID pandemic. And be with all who are suffering with emotional needs, mental illnesses, addictions, or any other burdens in their lives. We lift up before you this morning the following, and please repeat their names. Lesia Angst, Dorothy Bean, Nancy Beck, Russell Beck, Eric Benz, Sharon and Cindy Frankhauser, Eugene and Hazel Fry, Nick Gaiman, Alex Harding, Margaret Kuhlman, Tina Lavernchuk, Nolan Lead, Michael Martin family, Katie McGallicker, Mary Miller, Charles Moyer, Roma Oberholzer, Betty Ramsey, Larry Ramsey, Ella Sensenig, Becky Thunberg, Natalie Frankfurt Howe, and all others who we name before you now, either silently or aloud. We 
Lord, in your great love, bring them support and healing, compassion and wholeness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for which we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Well, we still have some chocolates left over, so please, on your way out, feel free to grab a chocolate. Um, so if you, you know, want one, just go ahead and take one. And again, Happy Mother's Day to everyone. Grow in peace, serve the risen Lord. Thanks be to God. See you next week at either the 8 o'clock or the 9 o'clock service inside.